So, the agenda is regime change. And in the Middle East, regime change often, if not always, is for the reason of oil. Now, Syria is a little bit different. Syria is different because unlike, say, Iraq or Saudi Arabia or Iran, it, it does have oil reserves in the ground, but it's not a huge, it's, they're not huge oil reserves like they are in uh, particularly Iraq or Saudi Arabia. But this fighting, this re regime change, I wanted to go into a little bit of what Syria does represent, though, because it's very, excuse me, it's very, very important. Now, on this show, you know, we covered the DAPL uh, Dakota Access Pipeline. We covered the protests. Uh, a few weeks ago, I talked about shale oil up in North Dakota and what the pipeline represented in terms of bringing that oil onto the market how without those pipelines, you, you're limited in the amount of oil that even if you can bring it up out of the ground, you don't want to store it. Anything you bring up out of the ground in that month, you want to be able to ship out and sell. Otherwise, leave it in the ground. It doesn't make sense. The ground is a better place for storing oil than out of the ground. So we talked about why the Dakota Access Pipeline was particularly important in terms of the U.S. decreasing its foreign oil reserves. Dakota Access Pipeline has been stopped by this administration. This administration, at the same time, funding a civil war in Syria. And Syria is about pipelines. To understand Syria, you ha and to understand the competing interests, when you understand the pipelines, it becomes very, very clear. Christian, if you would, the Syria pipelines, this is what the battle in Syria is about. Two pipelines. There is the pipeline that you see in red. These are oil pipelines that travels from Iran sitting on the Persian Gulf. It goes up sort of northwest through Iran, then cuts west sort of in the area between Baghdad and Erbil in Iraq, incidentally, the exact area that ISIS went and took over. Hmm. This is, and then it goes west through Syria, where it ends at, uh, I believe the port that it ends at is Homs, where it is put onto tankers and shipped into Europe. Now that particular pipeline, this is, uh, or this, uh, this may be a gas pipeline, as a matter of fact, the oil and gas. That is a Russia-backed. Now then, there is a U.S.-backed pipeline. That is the Qatar-Turkey pipeline that goes from Qatar, from Doha, basically, outside of that, cuts through Saudi Arabia, and then cuts up through Jordan, U.S. ally. So Saudi Arabia is a U.S. ally. Jordan is a U.S. ally. And then needs to go through Syria to get to Turkey, a NATO member. So you've got U.S. ally, U.S. ally, U.S. ally, not a U.S. ally, and then up to a U.S. ally. And you'll notice that this pipeline cuts straight through Aleppo. And this is U.S. Ba this is a U.S. backed pipeline. So whoever controls Syria gets all of the pipeline access. The battle for Syria is a battle for who's going to have the pipeline. And it's also the battle for northern Iraq. Iraq right now, the regime in Iraq is very, very friendly to Iran. There are Iranian troops up in the area north of Baghdad right now. And so this is, this is the geopolitics of oil and natural gas. These are energy geopolitics. And if you want to have an understanding of 
conflicts in that region, you're always going to look for it's either about getting it out of the ground, either the oil or natural gas, or moving it along pipelines. Afghanistan, same situation, pipelines. Pipelines. And Ukraine. Little known, uh, you know, about this particular administration and the, the interesting conflagration that's going on in Ukraine. Uh, do we have the article from a Wall Street Journal from back in 2014, Biden and Kerry here? So Joe Biden's son and a Kerry family friend back in May of 2014, which is just after the Ukrainian revolution, they joined the biggest Ukrainian natural gas producers board. And that region is huge for natural gas. I think something like 80% of the natural gas that goes into Europe passes through Ukraine or is generated in Ukraine. So you want to know about the war in Ukraine? Let's talk about the pipelines, Christian. That's what the war in Ukraine is about. So if you see where the fields are, that eastern Ukraine region, see the gas travels into Ukraine from Russia and Belarus and then travels into Europe. But look at all those fields in that area of Donbass and also Crimea. So all of the disputed areas that are being fought over just happen to have natural gas fields and the pipelines already in place to sell them into Europe. You know, it's, it's, it's interesting, Christian. We get fed a narrative that's about religious strife, mm -hmm. that's about ethnic identity, that's all of these different things. But always coincidentally, there's the money at the bottom. There's the money at the bottom. And in that region, the oil, the natural gas, it's all about that. And who's got control? Have you, have you ever read the book uh, or seen the movie Dune? No. Dune is, it, the movie's really, really cool. The book is incredibly long, but it's also very, very cool. It's, uh, it's, it's funny because the planet that it takes place on is great sci-fi piece. I, I think there's maybe four or five books in the series. The planet it takes place on is called Arrakis. <laughs> and it's a desert planet, right? And there are three different f houses, families that are basically that rule different parts of the galaxy that are mm -hmm. trying to control this because they mine spice, which is basically the poop of this giant worm. And that spice is the fuel for their starships. Huh. And whoever controls the spice controls the galaxy. So whoever controls the mining and getting the yeah. resources, the fuel out of the planet Arrakis, a <laughs> desert planet, yeah, it's, it's, it's a lot about the Middle East, so it's a very cool allegory. But what I love about it is that it gets into the, and it has all of these different ethnic divides and all of this, but uh -huh. at the core of it all is energy. You got to have energy. Mm -hmm. As human beings, we have to have energy, the fight for energy. And energy independence is so important. 